Hey, welcome back. We're going to wrap up. Goodness of fit for chi squared. I'm just going to cover the basics here. As you can see, for the first important idea, it's just how the two hypotheses work. The first hypo the null hypothesis is always going to be that the claimed distribution is in whatever context you're talking about is always going to be true. That's always going to be your null hypothesis for a chi squared. Okay. And the alternative hypothesis is always going to be that the claim distribution is not true. And you'll see an example of that down here in the check your understanding. But again, think back to the M&Ms. Is what we're seeing what they claim to be true or isn't? Because we're dealing with categorical data, it's either going to work or it's not. Okay, We're not going to worry about bigger, less than any of that other stuff because we're talking about a number of different categories. And as you saw in the M&Ms, we had two categories that were spot on, but everything else was the part that kind of screwed things up. Okay, The thing here, right here with the expected counts, remember that for your expected counts, you're going to go through and you're going to take the uh, probability of a particular item and multiply it by the number or your sample size. Okay, So P of I, I is that index, so it's the first probability, the second probability, the third probability, the fourth probability, that type of thing. All right. The second thing is the actual calculation. Sorry, I thought I deleted the whole page there for a second. And so for chi-squared test statistic, what you end up doing here, remember, is that you're taking this observed minus the expected value. So what's the difference between what you're seeing and what you thought you'd get? Square it, and then divide it through by that expected value. And then you're going to sum that up for all the different categories that you have. Okay? So again, what are you seeing minus what you expected? Square it. So then they get that way we're all positive. Divide it through by that expected value and go from there. The bigger that number is, the less likely what we're the less likely the null hypothesis is going to hold. Okay, and you can either go through table C for that. That's what down here, or you actually have a chi squared CDF that you can type stuff in on your calculator. And again, it's the lower value, the upper value, and then the number of uh, degrees of freedom. And remember, your degrees of freedom are based upon how many categories we're sorting everything into. Now, down below, there is a problem somebody decided in their ceramics class to make. Sorry. Um, to make a six sided die out of clay or ceramics, I guess. So take a look at that, hit pause, come on back, and we'll check these out. All right, so here we go. So six sided die, they rolled at 90 times. This is the distribution that Carrie got. Um, so one happened 12, two happened 28, three happened 12, et cetera, et cetera. So the first thing that we ask you is, what are your two hypotheses? So the first thing, remember, is always everything that we're claiming is true. So in this case, she wants to know, is it equally likely? Is it a fair dice? Is everything coming up the way it's supposed to, one-sixth of the time? So for the null hypothesis, the claim distribution to be of a fair die is true. In other words, you get one-sixth the probability of rolling any particular number. The null hypothesis, or excuse me, the alternative hypothesis then is that it's not a fair die, that the claim distribution of dice is not true. And so it's an unfair die. Part B, calculate out the expected counts for each. Now, this is a little bit easier because it's the same probability as you go along. So in this case here, you have a one out of six chance out of 90. So each one of those dice numbers should have happened 15 times. Now, obviously, we had, um, if we look up above, six happened 15 times. A lot of the numbers are fairly close, but that number two seemed to happen a little bit too much. But just how unlikely was it? it should have had, well, how unlikely was it? So we'll come down here and calculate the, chi var the expected value. So here, 12 minus my 15 divided by, and square that divided by 15. I'm going to add that in to my 28 divided, or minus 15, square that divided by 15. Continue doing that for all six numbers. And you come up with a chi-squared value of 14.4. So again, now we're going to look that up. Now your degrees of freedom, since we have six, remember, that means our degrees of freedom of five, because whoever picks second to last is actually picking for the last person too. And then when we go up and look at it in table C, no, sorry, I answered it. So it falls between 1.0 and 1, or in, I mean, 1, 0.01 and 0 0.02. So just to be safe, let's go back here and let's look in 5. And we had 14 point something. So 14 point something would fall right here, okay? Which means that it's falling between 0.01 and 0.02. 
So that means it close. I mean, obviously, it's probably right in the middle. But the, the number that we're going to take is that 2% because that's the most conservative number. So down here for our conclusion then, what we're going to write down here then is this. Um, the p-value falls between 0, 0 0.01 and 0 0.02. And because the p-value is less than 0 0.02, and which is less than our alpha value of 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and have convincing evidence that the die isn't fair. And we'll go from there. All right. We're going to formalize this a little bit more tomorrow. Still talk about M&Ms. We're going to talk about gummy bears the day after that. And so, you know, head down to your local store and get some so you can eat it while we're doing this. Again, remember, and I forgot to say this earlier, notes are down below. Throw a like down there. Subscribe, all that other good stuff. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye.